Greetings, Overwatch. Oh, yeah, shit. Wrong, uh, wrong channel. Hang on. <clears throat> Calling all prospectors, warriors, and wizards of Hollow Nest. I have no idea why I'm doing this video. So I've been pretty inundated with this game since just about when it came out, especially after my first video and my comparison to Hollow Knight and Dead Cells basically hard carried my channel for like three months. And since the beginning, I've come across more than a few comments wanting me to offer my input on more opinionated matters, like my favorite areas, enemies, abilities, and so forth. So since the creative side of my brain is running a little dry this week, I figured I might as well take the time to fulfill a long overdue request of mine, so I'm Rusty, and I'm giving you 10 Hollow Knight enemies that trigger my eyeballs right the hell out of their sockets. Yep. Just, uh, just gonna go on ahead and get this one out of the way as early as I can. The Primal Aspid, or previously named the Humming Knit, as per my last video on the history of Hollow Knight's development, is the regular Aspid's young and reckless dipshit cousin. The Primal Aspid spits three projectiles at you in tandem, two of which you can easily avoid, only to inevitably dash skull first into the one that you weren't even in danger of hitting. According to the Hunter's Journal, these creatures were once thought to be extinct. Now, I grew up with cousins and family members much younger than I, so I have a pretty high tolerance for such irritations. But imagine being so in annoying that literally every willing force in the kingdom just decides, you know what, fuck you and fuck only you, and works together to commit full-on genocide on your ass. Well, that's the life of the primal aspids. The Dirt Carver. Known to the knights that have actually been killed by one as the stupid fucking bullshit Dirt Carver, this enemy's favorite tactic is to play an audio cue that you can only hear under the intensity of the highest quality headphones before popping up from the ground like a demented weasel and chew your nuts off. These earwig looking little dickheads are the prime contributing factor to why I never go into the deep nest without my brown pants. If it's one, it's twelve, and you're never really sure if you've gotten them all, leading to this brooding paranoia that follows you around the deep nest as you're constantly waiting for the one you didn't kill to exact its revenge by tunneling into your ass five screens later. You know, we should all just thank our lucky stars these demons haven't stuck around long enough to evolve wings or something like that. You know what? Fuck the deep nest. I'm going home. I don't really know if it's just the spastic nature of these youngsters being so full of energy and raw testosterone that they just want to roll around and show everyone how strong they are, but these little shit pellets really piss me off. Baldurs are what I would imagine to be the hell spawn love child between an armadillo and a pinball. They scoot across the ground being just barely visible enough for you to only have yourself to blame for not seeing them, and I will admit it is kind of fun smacking the crap out of the ones that are too stubborn to just turn the other way and try again after a couple seconds, but that amusement doesn't make up for the frustration I wrestle with when there's nine of these roly poly Holy shit balls scooting across the ground taking turns headbutting me into each other. The Shadow Creepers in the Ancient Basin. The strange, unexplained hybrids between a centipede and a fucking Roomba. They are the dull-colored, passive-aggressive, unambitious 15-year-old scene kids at the cafeteria lunch table who can't stop blabbering about this new prog metal band that everyone just needs to listen to. The Shadow Creepers do not give a damn. They physically do not have the energy capable of giving a damn about anything but where they get their food and water from. Or, wait, actually. Well, shit, never mind, they don't even do that. So what merits of annoyance do they actually possess, Rusty, since they seem to have all the functionality of a dead battery? Well, it's because they demand just enough of your attention to where a simple loss of rhythm during a wall jump can send you careening into the spines of these bastards. Bullshit, you mutter under your breath as you pessimistically trudge your way back to the bench in the other room because you refuse to let something that stupid take away your health. As much as I am tempted to let my bias against the entire Royal Waterways area ruin such a fine, creative specimen of enemy, I eventually came to realize these jigsaw puzzle piece break in half bastards are a huge reason why I grew to hate the damn place to begin with. The Flukemon roams around mindlessly, hanging its head low to the ground and making weird slobbering noises you'd only hear elsewhere in an ASMR video. My first interaction with these creatures was quite the experience. I was curious to find out what was making the sound of someone enthusiastically unclogging a toilet and went down a level below to investigate. And suddenly, I'm being chased into the next screen by a knockoff supermarket brand version of the nematodes from Spongebob. A quick sigh of relief as I turn around and cleave the little worm in half, only for it to turn around to me and say, not even my final form, motherfucker, reanimates itself and starts chasing me again. You ever been killed by a barking turnip? It's, it's pretty demoralizing. But, just as they often do, the Team Cherry creative branch decides to one-up themselves once again. Case in point, what's the one thing more demoralizing than being killed by a barking turnip, you ask? How about a flying barking turnip? And let's make it to where they only attack you when you're coincidentally swimming across an ocean-sized pool of water, where your only means of defense is to dog paddle back and forth and spam dash your way to safety like a spastic dolphin. And as I'm describing my encounters with all these enemies, all my hatred toward the layout of the Royal Waterways is suddenly starting to come back to me. An enemy by itself can be an inconvenience and enough to fight, sure, but the waterways are an example of combining annoyingly hard enemies with inconvenient level layout, all with the depressing ambience of toiling through bug sewage. And all of these micro annoyances really begin to add up, and they strike you in just the right way to where it makes you want to pry the hard drive off your PC after you're done. 
It's important to realize when you're ahead of an argument with a friend, it would behoove you to not approach the rest of the debate with an air of cockiness, lest you spout something you didn't mean to say and end up turning the tables on yourself. The Fool Eater plant is the embodiment of this principle. I remember reading the journal entry in the options menu, saying that you really would have to be a fool to be tricked by a plant. Har har, I say, indulging in the humor of such an objective truth. Who would actually be that stupid? I rhetorically ask myself while dislodging the teeth of a Venus flytrap from the cheeks of my ass. The condescending tone of the game actually making fun of me for falling for such a ludicrous trap doesn't really help my self-esteem, and much less so when I think I've cleared the entire gauntlet of carnivorous plants only to realize there was one I didn't see at the very end of the area screen, and my accursed avarice for Geo quite literally comes around to bite me in the ass. The Volt Twisters are a special type of enemy that I have a unique relationship with, because I could never really decide if I hated specifically them, or if I just hated that every square inch of the screen was also covered by aspids and cancer, and the Volt Twisters were just the guys that happened to kill me the most. I don't know, maybe listing the Colosseum itself as its own enemy here would be a lot easier, since the only thing I remember from my first few swings at it was my hands shaking more with each attempt, and the option of using the warranty on my equipment after accidentally putting my fist through my fucking monitor seeming more and more viable, but the Volt Twisters always had this tendency to make whatever I was doing a thousand times more difficult. If they just appeared by themselves, I'd be flooring these floating pinheads no problem. But they always seemed to walk in and introduce themselves after everyone and their mom had already been invited to the fucking party. And now I'm being zapped and turned into a crispy chicken dinner because I failed to see a barely visible electric cloud in the middle of all the Colosseum cancer. The Loodle somewhat puts me in the mind of a hypersensitive sugar addled child that constantly needs to be moving all the time. Only if that child had four legs, a watermelon for a head, and could stick to walls like fucking Spider-Man. Some of these enemies really don't know how to leave you the hell alone. I could waddle all the way through the gauntlet they've set up for me, but a couple of these watermelon looking parasites would still chase me all the way to the end of the screen. They're impossible enough to predict as it is because of their, if I don't know where I'm going then you sure as shit don't train of thought, and you can't line them up for a quick soul blast either because they hardly ever appear in flat terrain areas to begin with, so you'd have better luck aiming your piss through the whips of a fucking cake mixer. And by the way, good luck trying to hit these bastards, because if you manage to catch one laying still and line up a strike on one, it's only at the cost of another one hiding off screen and launching itself into the back of your head. The hoppers in the Kingdom's Edge aren't even really that annoying. In fact, they're some of the most predictable enemies in the whole game. They glide back and forth, stomping on the ground like your upstairs neighbors until they headbutt a wall, go, what the hell was that, and mindly just turn the other way, minding its own business. I can't help but sympathize with the poor bastards. Imagine your greatest weakness being your own momentum. They stay just at the right speed and height for you to literally stand still and mash the attack button until they explode into piles of orange goo and money. Enter the Great Hoppers. They don't just shit on you, they do so in an entirely predictable manner that you, if you were paying attention, probably could have prevented. I didn't expect their movements to actually track mine considering the normal ones didn't do that, so keeping that in mind, I just howl wraithed him to death while dashing back and forth between his hops like some sort of death tango. And this game really doesn't feel bad requesting some pretty tall orders from you as a player, because immediately in the very next screen, the game decided my dancing skills were seasoned enough to handle two of these shitheads. Well, you know what they say, it only takes two to tango, but it takes three to hide in a corner where they can't get you and swat them away like you're trying to guard your picnic lunch from a gathering of angry bees.